So today we are going to dive back into our series on recording, editing, mixing, and mastering worship music with a live recording of Waymaker that was recorded at the Creek Church in London, Kentucky during a night of worship. This series has been a ton of fun for us. And last week we did two videos, one on editing. We talked about all of the editing of the bass and the drums, the acoustic guitars and all those things. And then David went ahead and started mixing the drums. They sound fantastic. So if you haven't been keeping up with this series or you missed those couple of episodes, go back and watch those after you watch this one. It's getting really good sound, and David did a fantastic job mixing the drums. They sound massive. There are tracks that you can download of what he mixed so that you can kind of shoot for that. If you want to, you can kind of compare to your mix and kind of contrast and just see what you think of what you can do versus what he did. Maybe you can mix it better. And if you want to, you can shoot us an email, info capsule to the links down below down there, and you can send it to us and let us know how it's going for you. Also, to our website this week, we added the ability to be able to book some consultation with David and I. So if you've got a project that you're getting ready to kick off, if you need mixing, help, tutorial, you know, something like that, you want some more one-on-one -on -one help, that's a thing that we're doing now and it's on our website. You can find a link to that below. We're also offering mixing services, recording services, that sort of thing. So if that's something you're interested in, it's down there, it's available. We're super pumped to be able to just get to work with the people that are watching the channel and getting involved with this. And then last but not least, today, we're jumping in, we're going to listen to Sarah's vocal, and we're going to do some tuning, all right? So we're going to look at Melodyne. I'm going to show you some of the things that have been taught to me that make Melodyne really easy, and uh, it just takes a little bit of practice to get really, really good at it and to get really fast at it, and that is what we are going to look at today, is tuning the vocal, the lead vocal, Sarah's vocal for Waymaker, all right? Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so before we dive in to the actual tutorial part of this lesson, let me just go ahead and sort of give you the lay of the land, all right, and what I've brought into this session. Just quickly give you the rundown. We've got the uh, the crowd mic and the room mic, and we've got this um, drum stem that David sent us, and I'm just going to solo all that up, let you listen to that. So we've got that pulled into here. I just took the mixed drums instead of the raw drums because honestly, it's just more fun to kind of work through some of this as we're going along. And uh, we've got the bass. And of course, I did a few things to it because just wanted it to sound, you know, a little more like a record. We put that on there. We put that on there. We put that on there. All right. So we've got these acoustic guitars. And then all this down here in the blue, this is sort of a preview for a future video. Okay, a little preview action here. We've got some extra guitars that we're, uh, that we're throwing in here as part of the post-production process, okay, to really beef this song up, make it super special, a lot of fun. And I'm gonna give you like a 10 second taste of that because I'm pretty excited about that video. It's coming up in uh, maybe a week or so, so. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, pardon the interruption and the weird cut, but I needed to go ahead and get this set up a little better than I had it, and I've made it a little bit easier on us by adding an extra track. So we've got the untuned version, we've got the Melodyne version, which is what is finished in Melodyne, just in case I wanna reference any of that, and then we've also got the Vox Plus, which is where I committed the Melodyning. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the untuned version. Let me pull this up, and we're gonna to go to this big vocal phrase, because this is sort of a fun spot to work on, and let me just show you the untuned solo vocal here. You never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, no! Still already sounds pretty good. I mean, this is one of the reasons why it's so fun to work with a vocalist like Sarah is that she sounds really good just, you know, I guess out of the box for, for lack of a better term. So let me just show you some of what I do when I'm tuning a vocal like this. I think it makes it pretty easy. This is how it was taught to me when I was sort of coming up, I guess. What you're looking at is essentially you're looking at a pitch grid, okay? If you've never looked at Melodyne before and we've got it in the key of A major, it's already set, that's the, set, that's the key that the song is in. And by setting it to the key, it's gonna go ahead and gray out any notes that are not in the key for us. So that makes it really easy. It takes out 
most of the guesswork, okay? The second thing that we need to look at is that we need to realize that even though this sort of looks like uh, the blobs sort of remind us of MIDI, if you're familiar with the MIDI piano roll, vocal pitch as someone is singing, it bends in and out of the notes and around it, and there is a lot of waver to actually what they're singing, and that's sort of what gives vocals their unique character, okay? So we don't want to just, uh, we don't want to just put that exactly perfectly on the grid and make those lines all flat. Otherwise, that's what sort of creates that robotic sound, all right? And we also um, need to uh, note that the computer is sort of guessing at where it thinks the blobs should go. And so sometimes the blobs are a little bit longer and we can get more accurate natural tuning by cutting it up. So what I do is just leave the Melodyne tool with the arrow mode, and I'll go through and just try to find places where I'm like, oh, that's definitely a different note, you know, than 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 where the blob is sitting. So this is a great one right here to, to look at the example. This is, uh, she's singing an E here, but it's bending down into this run, okay? And so we can just make a cut there. And then she's also kind of still going in and out of this run, and she's got sort of a bend up and then back down. And so we can add another little cut there. And there may be a couple of other places where it makes sense to do a little cut. I don't know, it might be cool to do on there, but I'm gonna check that out later. Sometimes when the when a singer's falling off notes, uh, I'll make a little cut like that, maybe, uh, maybe not. Sometimes I'll cut a little ahead further. Okay, that'll, that'll drop that down. And I think for just that section, that'll be enough, all right? Just gonna kind of scan here again the one. Okay, so then I'm gonna lasso it all. And again, we're just, we've got the arrow tool. We're just gonna double click. There we go. It's gonna snap it all to the grid for us, okay? And then we're just gonna take a listen. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, no. Okay, so here's a good example right here. Let's, I have a shortcut key programmed into my Melodyne where if I just hit P for pitch, it will, take it back to the original note that she sang, okay? And so I'm gonna do that right there, and I'm actually also gonna make a little cut right here and hit that P, okay? Now, technically, the center of this pitch is not where she's singing, okay? That's a, that's a C, but you can see that the line curves up and back down really, really quickly on both of those, and so I think just by listening to it with my ears, my preference would be actually to knock those out and not have them, not have that centered on that C sharp because I think that sounds actually a little unnatural. It's higher than where she was actually shooting. And I think it's just part of the character of how she was bending it. Is just from experience tuning, that's what I think. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reset those by hitting my my P shortcut key and just listen to it again. You never stop, you never stop working, you never stop no. Okay. That's cool, I'm better with those, but then there's a spot here that I think sounds a little weird. So I'm just gonna reset that and maybe make a little cut. You never stop working, you never stop now. Stop working. Okay, that's too much, starts to sound like rubber bands. So I'm gonna reset that one. Again, too much. Okay, you never and maybe I could cut this. Okay, you never stop working. You never there we go. I think that sounds a lot better. It's a lot more natural with the cuts in there, not trying to hold those notes all together at one. Technically, you're looking at this and you're going, oh, those are those are out, you know, and you could even bring it down a little bit closer. Let's try to center them. A little more. Stop working. You never I think that's fine, that could work. So then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this section, and this is just what I like to do. I, I some, some people will grab this pitch modulation tool and they'll make it a little bit tighter. I think that makes it sound a little bit too robotic, a little bit too like hyper-tuned. For pop or other genres, perfectly fine. Use that tool. For this, I think it makes it sound just a little hyper-tuned. So here's what that sounds like. Stop working, you never stop now. Dumb, don't like it, okay? But what I do like is taking this pitch drift, and usually I'll start with maybe like 
50, yeah, let's just go 60. Usually I go with about 50, 60, something like that. And that'll just smooth out some of the drift on some of those notes as she's kind of bending between them. And I like to do that because I think that it's sort of the perfect marriage of it not sounding too perfect. You know, it still sounds pretty natural, but it's just a little bit better than without correcting that drift. So let's go ahead and give that a listen. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, no, wait. Okay, this one right here is starting to bother me the more I'm listening to it. And I think it's because of the way she's falling off of that note. So I'm just gonna let that be back to the way that it was and see what that sounds like. No, wait, man. Maybe cut it one more time. I like that better, okay? Some of this is personal preference and what your ears like. All right, so let's just go ahead and listen to that now in the track with the tuned version. There we go. Let's see how much that's uh, like what I did before. Did I fix it the first time? Oh, no, I didn't. See, I left that the first time. So see, that's better. We did a better job this time, okay? So now what I wanna do is, let's see, let's go ahead and get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. So now you've got sort of the tips and tricks. That's all I do. Every time that I'm doing this, I just, I go for try to find the key of the song, and then I work through it. I make little cuts where I think that there are bends that Maladine didn't pick up on just with its natural settings, make the cuts, put it into tune, center the pitches, and then just listen until I feel like that it's right. And if it's over tuned, then I use my little pitch key to go back and listen and just make adjustments and just kind of work through it that way. And it usually does not take me very long to get through a mixed lead or through a finished lead vocal. All right, so now let's go back to the beginning of this because there's one other thing that I want to show you is at the beginning of the song, there's a spot right here where I left Sarah's vocal pretty much untuned because She's singing low and there's enough of the background noise with the crowd and stuff bleeding into her microphone that it started to sound very like just rubber bandy and wavery and not good at all. And so I just turned, I just turned it off. Okay. And I'm going to show you because that that's sort of the only place that you can get in trouble with a lead vocal like this is if there's something just real, real quiet, just right here. We'll just play it solo. I worship you. Okay, and you can hear, sort of as it's going into there, a little bit too much of the tuning action, right? So if I just take it off, just hit my P button, it doesn't... Okay, and we could even cut this maybe just a little bit, just this would be the only one, and just try to put those in, but not this spot where you can hear more of the bleed between her microphone. Maybe even do that one. See, that's good, and you just work around it, you know? If I tune all this stuff in here, though, that I left untuned, not it's, it's no bueno. It starts sounding like rubber bands. Yeah, that's not good. All right, so we're gonna undo that. That's sort of the only thing that I wanted to point out about this song is that, you know, with it being live and there being the real band behind it, we want to get as much of the vocal to sound as great as we can. But we're fortunate and we're blessed because Sarah's a fantastic singer, and you know, even the stuff that's uncorrected still sounds really, really good. We're gonna go back and give herself one more listen with it just sort of in the track, just to get ourselves pumped up because I threw some reverb on here and some extra compression, and I wanna hear this little run, and uh, we'll just uh, sort of double check our work in this last little chorus section. When I don't see it, you <laughs> All that delay. It's gonna be so much fun. I'm really glad that we are knifing our way through this series. I'm having a ton of fun doing it. I'm having a ton of fun answering your comments down below. If there's anything that wasn't clear at all, guys, just leave it down below. Super happy to help and 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 be involved in what you're doing and try to make it sound as good as possible. And uh, really just enjoying teaching this content. Um, so. 
Yeah, all right, there we go. You can download this track. You can download my tuned version to kind of reference and compare to your own tuned version and practice along with these techniques. I hope that they work out good for you and that you got something out of this video. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.